Hello and welcome back to another Slay the Spire stream. I'm your host, Virtual Bread, and today we're going to be kicking it off with an Ironclad run. Let's do it. Yeah, rush down loops, that'll do it. Uh, we could upgrade a card, max HP, choose a rare card to obtain. Rare cards are quite good with Ironclad. Losing all gold is the cheapest sort of high variance option. There's like lose all gold, lose max HP, or lose current HP. Uh, that are the options for this third thing, and gold is by far the easiest one. And choosing a rare card is probably the best one for Ironclad. Ironclad rare cards are quite good. Um, I have seen some people doing doing uh, Ironclad boss relic swaps, and I've, I've done a couple of them, but um, I think I'm still a holdout on Ironclad. I think Burning Blood's just way too good. Um, I would be happy to build a Barricade Entrench deck. Barricade, barricade Entrench is really good, um, but I won't force it. We'll have to We'll have to see if that kind of deck wants to happen. Kind of awkward padding. It looks like we might be going to an early shop. Um, we're pretty much forced to go here if we want to do four elites. But maybe we don't want to do four elites. That's a lot of elites. So maybe we go this way instead. Um, that makes a lot of sense. Gets um, two extra fires. Whereas the crazy four elite path gets also two. Oh wait, no, it only gets one, just this one. You have to skip this one if you want to do four elites. Um, so I think we'll plan on going here. Doing three elites, two fires. Okay, so that doesn't require us to save money so we can spend the money on a rare card. So let's see what the rare card is. A limit break, demon form, or double tap. Um, Double Tap is, is good, but kind of low impact compared to the other two. imagine it's probably going to be Demon Form. Um, Demon Form answers a lot of questions about what the deck is going to do, how, to, how it's going to do it. It's not particularly good in Act 1. It's great against Log of Ulan. Good point. Um, it's good against Sentries. Really only weak against uh, Gremlin Nub. And even then, on turn 1, Demon Form is pretty good. Limit Break is nice. Uh, Limit Break's probably better at Act 4 than Demon Form. Limit Break can scale up quite a bit faster. You can do like Flex Pot Double Limit Break on turn 1 and get 20 strength. Um, whereas Demon Form is going to take uh, quite a while to scale up that high. It takes 7 turns of Demon Form plus. Um, but, you know, that's Act 4 and it requires 2 copies of Limit Break to both be in your opening hand as well as a Flex, so... Limit Break is definitely a curse in Act 1. It's very unlikely we get any other source of strength scaling. I guess I shouldn't say very unlikely, but... Uh, it, will have, it won't be until late in the Act when we get other sources of strength scaling. So I think Demon Form is the most obvious. Like, you can build a deck with just this. Double Tap's quite nice, too. If we get, uh, like, an uppercut or something, Double Tap ends up looking pretty fancy. Um, Demon Form is also a bit of a curse. Pretty hard to play Demon Form in Act 1. Um, Log of Ulan is the obvious exception. Uh, sometimes you can fit it in against sentries, but sometimes you draw Demon Form when the sentries are hitting for 20, and you don't feel like you have time. Uh, we are also a 3 energy deck, so Demon Form is quite expensive. But I think we'll pick it anyway. Okay. A couple of slimes. Right, they're giving me the turn off, so I'll go ahead and <laughs> develop Demon Form, turn one, fight one. These block for four, this block's for three. That's how you save the most health. We're looking for net negative one on the fight, if we can take no more damage. Which seems extremely likely. Okay. Uh, there is an entrench. And ends spawn on. One weird trick in Anne Ant Bonin's love. Uh, it's up against Dual Wield and Fire Breathing. None of these are really top tier floor one picks. None of them really say, pick me with demon form. Um, yeah, Fire Breathing is definitely an option. Fire Breathing is quite good. Um, we are against the only Act 1 boss who does not give us any curses, which is Guardian. Um, so Fire Breathing, not particularly useful in that fight. Um, I do like me a good dual wield. Get a dual wield, get like, metallicize or something, get a bunch of powers. 
um, or just copy uh, pummels and stuff. Duel is very flexible. We are, we do have a target for it, theoretically. We could copy demon form. Uh, doesn't seem likely to happen in Act 1. Um, if we get Sneko Eye, we would really like uh, Sneko Eye in this deck because demon form is so expensive. Um, Sneko, do wield uh, Sneko Eye is amazing. Um, yeah, Mega Christ, uh, Fire Breathing is, is, like, theoretically a payoff for the, like, status synergy deck you're talking about. I feel like the status synergy is mostly just, like, Second Wind, Feel No Pain, Dark Embrace, right? Like, those are the real payoff. Um, I would almost rather have a Barricade in that deck than a Fire Breathing. Um, fire Breathing's just, like, kind of like, it's Guardian. The only one who doesn't give statuses. I like Dual Wield, I just don't know if it's worth picking. I don't think we can pick... Maybe we do pick Entrench, I don't know. I've had a bunch of runs where I'm like, I'll pick Entrench just in case. Um... And then I just have a useless Entrench for the rest of the run. Um, Entrench is the, like, if you want to go super wide and keep your, your synergy options way open, we could pick Entrench, but uh, it just seems too weak. It's like, we already have a curse with the demon form. I don't think we can take a second curse. Dual wield's kind of a curse, though. Maybe we just skip here. I wish it was just, like, a sword boomerang here. <laughs> like, it's cool that we got all these, like, run-defining uncommons on floor one. Um, but, like, it's not actually good. <laughs> we, don't, we don't want these. I just, like, I'm just having, like, FOMO, right? I don't want to, like, skip a dual wield and be like, Oh, this is a perfect dual wield deck. Or skip an entrench. Oh, this is a perfect entrench deck. I don't care about fire breathing. <laughs> I'm happy to skip it, even if it is a fire breathing deck. It's mainly do wield that I'm worried about missing out on. I think we skip it. It's not good now. Maybe it'll be good later, but we'll have to pick it later if it's good later. If you do dream in, do you drew demon form turn one against cubes, would you play it? I think so. Um, if I like get a shrug it off, and I draw the shrug it off versus the demon form on turn one, then I'd probably sh play shrug it off instead. But we don't have a shrug it off now, so the demon form really helps us end the fight. All right, it hurts, but we did it. We could remove a strike or upgrade the demon form. You had electro, defrag, force field, and capacitor on floor five. Whoa, that's you're committed. You, there's like you're like extremely likely to die to gremlin knob with that that build. I'd be dodging elites if I had that. Um, yeah, it definitely can pay off. Um, but super scary. Um, generally, like, r card removals are a lot more scarce of a resource um, than upgrades. Um, you get, like, I don't know, 10 or 15 upgrades over the course of a run, you only get, like, four or five card removes. So, generally at this event, I prefer to card remove. Um, I would never transform here. Transform is just, like, a worse version of card remove. No, it's never, it's never ever transform. Um, maybe if you have an egg, you could pick transform. If you're, like, super desperate, but it's almost never transform. It's super bad compared to remove. Um. Yeah, that's the thing, right? It's like, if we remove a card, we're, we're probably removing a strike, and then we don't have enough attacks. We do have two more hallway fights to pick up an attack. Um. And if we're super desperate, we could go to a shop, but... I think I'd rather just upgrade the demon form. Uh, I'll take a defend and split both. Taking quite a bit of damage. Taking eight. We only heal for six. We're at, at most, at best, we're at negative two on this fight, so that's too bad.
Uh, this is Second Wind. Goodness. I mean, Second Wind is so good, right? Uh, you had a question. Since the Dead Adventure event identifies an elite in the beginning, if you don't fight it, does it impact future elite encounter chances? Uh, I believe the answer is no. And also, um, with the Dead Adventure fight, you can end up fighting the same elite twice. But if you do fight it, you can't fight that elite again, I believe is how it works. So it ignores the the elite chance at the beginning, but then it does um, it does put that remove that one from the pool for the next one. I believe is how it works. Um, second wind is not actually like super good now, but second wind is just way too good to ignore. Like almost every run, I'm like, we need a second wind in this deck, and like there's a second wind here, so I'm not skipping it. Um, okay. Uh, Demon Form. <laughs> sure. Um, we're gonna defend at least once and strike at least once. We could defend for one health. Seems a little greedy. Um, or we could do nine damage. Yeah, let's just do nine damage. I should have looked and see, see if I had uh, potential lethal next turn. Uh, I do not with this. 14 plus, this will be 18. Is 32, so that's not lethal either. Uh, we could Vuln Pot and then we get lethal with triple strike. We should probably use one of the two potions since otherwise we're holding on to both. Um, and Vuln Pot is lethal, so I guess I'll do Vuln Pot. Oops. <laughs> Tried to make my hand vulnerable. That doesn't work. Um, shrug it off, Wild Strike, and Perfected Strike. Uh, Wild Strike is both, like, an absolute boss in Act 1, and we have a second land. Um, so I imagine it's gonna be Wild Strike. I did talk about Shrug it off earlier. Would be cool if this event can only appear if you die in Act 1 in a previous run. It's an interesting idea. The Dead Adventurer is you. I think, I think it's weird that the text of the Dead Adventurer event stipulates that the adventurer does not have pants. I think they're implying that he's been looted, but like, that's just weird. Yeah, I'll grab a Wild Strike. We're probably getting an upgrade at this fire, and Wild Strike's got kind of a crazy upgrade, so let's, let's hope for that. Um, I think we take a card remove. We're pretty much at max HP. Um... Uh, well, we've only got, only got one attack in the three cards we've added. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's like the meme where if somebody's shoes fall off, then you know they're dead. Like, if, they, if somebody gets hit really hard and their shoes fall off, that person's dead. Except with pants, obviously. The gold seems like it doesn't do anything. Um... The card remove seems a little bit dangerous, though. Uh, we're gonna have a wild, wild strike plus. We'll probably be fine. I almost removed the wild strike, thinking that this was the upgrade, but it isn't. This is the upgrade. Also, we've got two potions. So we should be able to should be able to deal here. Pretty happy to see second wind, I guess. Double strike, second wind. We could even um, skill pot to get more uh, skills to exhaust. I think we're happy enough with double strike. Second one, if we're gonna uh, swift pot, we're probably looking for demon form. Um. Okay. Demon form versus wild strike here. Um, I think we uh, swift pot and then uh, bash wild strike. Makes a lot of sense. And hopefully get lethal next turn. 25 plus 18. Seems lethal. Sweet. Another Sundial run. Last run was a Sundial run too. Um, sundial run when we already have Second Wind. Hmm. Uh, so I think we're looking for card draw. Is Dark Embrace good enough? 
Dark Embrace Second Wind is a thing. We're probably taking an upgrade next floor. Uh, we could take Armaments and upgrade it. Just to get some Strike Pluses. Yeah, we've we've had several picks where we were offered zero attacks. Um, pretty nice that we got the Wild Strike. The Wild Strike did 50 damage to Grandma Numb. We needed that. It's really early for a for a Dark Embrace. Is Bash Upgrade ever worth it? Yes, absolutely. Um, I would say Bash Upgrade is something that you like. I don't know if like frequently do, but like often do either late in Act 1 or in Act 2. I prefer to not do it before a potential Log of Ulan, because I'd rather set up the Vulnerable and then wake him up the following turn than play Bash and uh, wake him up that turn. But yeah, Bash upgrade is totally worth it. Even in Log of Ulan, like if you upgrade Bash, then it does it does two more damage, which is kind of bad, but it, it Vulns for an extra turn, so like... It gives you value. Are you asking about Bash Upgrade next floor? Um, Bash Upgrade next floor makes sense if we take none of these cards, I think. The problem with Bash Upgrade next floor is we're probably taking... If we take either Dark Embrace or Armaments, those are way higher upgrade priorities. Dark Embrace gets basically twice as good when we upgrade it. Um, and Armaments has a huge upgrade. Okay, yeah, generally. Um, there's also a... Um, I forget what it's called... Um, Paper Frog. If you have Paper Frog, then uh, your vulnerable uptime is really important. And, like, obviously, how important Bash Plus is to your vulnerable uptime depends on your deck, right? If you have, like, two Shockwave Pluses, you probably don't need a Bash uh, Plus. Thanks for the follow, Baron Sting. Appreciate it. Sorry, it's clearly Baron Stain 59. I, uh, I got a flashback of when people were arguing about the pronunciation of the Berenstein Bears several years ago. I don't know if people remember that. Berenstein. Berenstein. Who knows? Um... Do, do the books all say Berenstain? Oh, right, and people got into, like, alternate timeline things with that. I remember this. People think there was some time travel involved. Makes sense to me. Ah, yes. Is wait, did you spell it how the how the how the books are spelled? Is it spelled Berenstain in the books? That's crazy. Oh my god. <laughs> no, I'm right there with you. I always pronounce it Berenstein Berenstein Bears. I don't know if that's related to my uh my regional accent, Baron Steen. I mean, Stein is like a... Um, there's a lot of Jewish names that end in Stein for some reason that I don't understand. Probably a language artifact. So I, I sort of assumed that they were Jewish bears. I don't know. <laughs> but if it's spelled Stein, I don't know. I, don't, I have no idea. You wanted a bear name in your WoW Druid, that makes sense. I also played a, a bear druid in WoW. Although my gear was always shitty, because I, I insisted on being able to, to switch forms. And all the gear wants you to like pick a specific form, and I was like, no. I'm going to be a bear sometimes, and a cat other times. And you're all going to have to deal with it. Because that's that's what shapeshifters are supposed to do. Thanks for the follow, Disc Buddy. Appreciate the support. Welcome to the Vegetable Batch. Um, I don't know. I think armaments is the, like... Optimize for Act 1 pick. Armaments Plus is a, a really neat card to have in the deck. 
Dark Embrace is the optimized for Act 4 pick. Where it's like, we've got a med kit, and we're trying to like fill up our hand and do our infinite combo as quickly as possible. Um, we do have a Sundial, so Armaments does add a card to the deck. Something I was talking about a lot yesterday, because yesterday was also a first relic as a Sundial uh, run. I think we do have to pick the Dark Embrace, because the infinite is real, and we already have a second wind. Alright, so let's upgrade that Dark Embrace, because Dark Embrace is garbage until you upgrade it. Uh, it also helps in um, Sentries, which is 50% of the next uh, Elite fight. It draws us a full hand most of the time. Oh, the Smooth Stone's a great pickup, happy to see that. Buenos dias, guitar. <laughs> Good day to you, sir. Uh, okay. In this fight, we play Demon Form before we wake him up, and then we win. Ideally, we would have played Demon Form on turn one. Oh, come on. I guess we can second win to draw a card. But then we wouldn't be able to play that card, so no. Probably should have bashed that turn, but it doesn't matter because I'm not waking him up this turn because I'm playing Demon Form this turn. He gets a nice natural wake up. Alright. Uh, should have second winded first because we could have drawn something we wanted to play, like a Wild Strike. Uh, I'm actually going to. I should restart the fight. Um. <laughs> it's such a long fight, though, because I already, <laughs> already played. It was like turn four of the fight already. Dark Embrace on one. Nothing on two. I was supposed to play Bash, but didn't. Could have theoretically played second win there, I guess. Demon form on three. He wakes up naturally. And then we second win first to draw some cards. Hey, look at that. One of the cards is Wild Strike. Wild Strike's a good card. Um, let's go ahead and use the Skill Pot. We're taking 14 damage, so if we find something like Flame Barrier, it's useful. Oh. Um, Entrench Blocks for 6. Limit Break might end the fight a turn sooner. I'm not a believer in it ending the fight a turn sooner. I think the fight's ending when it's ending. I go for the six block. Yeah, it's clearly ending next turn, no matter what. <laughs> Nothing Log I can do about it. All right, here's our first strength scaling stuff: pummel versus sword boom. Um, I like pummel a lot. It says exhaust. We've got a dark embrace. Problem with Pummel is you only get to do it once. Or a Sword Boomerang you can do over and over. Um, I think we're going to pick the Pummel though. We want to keep the deck thin for Sundial doing something someday. And Pummel scales better. We'll go hit these question marks instead of the hallway fights. Um, question marks can give us, like, Golden Idol and stuff. Hmm. Uh, we have quite a bit of health. I don't mind uh, taking a little bit of damage to get some gold. Metascale a little bit. It's only 11 health. Go down to 40. Seems okay. First hard pool fight. Um, we'll bash the dangerous one. Blocker 6. Uh, Pummel does 12, 12 plus 9 kills. We become vulnerable. Um, and the next turn we, like, double defend Wild Strike. He'll be hitting for 16 next turn, probably. In fact, I believe it's guaranteed. Uh, so we'll end up taking 6. If we did, if we had one more damage, we could kill him, but we don't have one more damage. Alternate plan is we could double defend and pummel. NL Waste Link says four, but with no context, I cannot interpret that four. Um, 
do you possibly mean by saying four? I have no idea. We're doing 23 damage, so he, we're off by one. It's like four instead of six. No, he's, he's hitting for 16. Not four. Oh, you mean, you're talking about the oddly smooth stone decks for the two defense, so I'd be blocking for 12. I see what you mean. You are correct. There it is, we've taken four. As predicted by NL Wasted Link, NL Stradamus. <laughs> oh, you just you just said the number four, so I was like, hmm. <laughs> this requires some analysis. Figure out what he's talking about. Uh, Havoc actually makes a lot of sense with Sundial. Trying to get a really thin deck. Um, probably we're eventually going to end up trying to do an infinite combo with this deck. And Havoc both draws a card and gets rid of a card. Um, Havoc is also kind of dangerous because... Um... We can end up exhausting the card that we need for the combo. Um, it can also play Demon Form for free. There's a second wind in the deck, so playing second wind as a surprise is sometimes quite bad. Um, I'm usually not a Havoc gamer. I did see Life Coach pick it uh, fairly aggressively a couple times, and I was like, huh, that's an interesting idea. Putting Havoc back in the game. It does cost zero if you upgrade it. I mean, it's good. It's good then. Um, we have Dark Embrace, so it would draw a card. Got some exhaust synergy. We also, like, sometimes can use Wild Strike to put a wound on top of the deck. If there's an empty draw pile and then Havoc it. Get rid of it. Um, there's some synergy. But I don't think I'm going to pick it. Because Havoc itself is a card that we have to, like, draw and play, and it costs one currently. So it's only, like, after we've played Havoc twice in a fight that we're really coming out ahead with this card pick. And um, it has to be kind of a long fight for Havoc to, to do anything. What is in the cup? Currently it is empty. Um, there's a little bit of honey residue in the bottom. I put honey in my tea, so sometimes it sinks to the bottom. But now I'm drinking water. I've switched over. Um, and by water, of course, I mean 100% vodka. Um, sure. Um, I guess I'll buy three potions, right? We only have one slot, but she could, like, if we buy three potions, we have a higher chance of getting, like, a fairy or a um, fruit juice or something. A tropic brew. It's not what we see here. We can pair up our Ancient Pot with our Flex Pot. That's pretty neat. Get five permanent strength. Um, Smoke Bomb gives us less resources than we would otherwise have, and Gambler's Brew is not that great if your deck doesn't have a lot of card draw or a lot of, like, statuses. So we're going to go with Ancient Pot. Grumma again. This time we get Demon Form on turn one if we want it. Um... Or we could just take the five permanent strength and bash wild strike. Um, having bash and wild strike in the hand makes the demon form worse, right? Because I can't like draw them. I kind of want to save the flex spot combo for guardian. But I kind of think it's not necessary, and that, like, Demon Form will eventually carry that, so I think Grandma Nub might be a bigger concern. Maybe I try and save the Ancient Pot. Maybe we just Flex Pot for this turn. If we do Bash Hits for 13, Wild Strike Hits for 22, 33. 13 plus 33 is 46. He'd be vulnerable next turn. Um... And then we basically get to do all the damage that's left in the deck. Assuming we get like two strikes next turn, which is kind of the worst case scenario. We get 18 damage from that. It was 46. 46 plus 18 is 64. And then we get 
Um, plus 12, plus 8, which is another 20. So we'd end up doing 84 damage. So worst case scenario, we actually don't get lethal. We'd have to draw three strikes next turn. All right, well, I'll take both of them. There's no reason to risk it. Greatest misconception about Slay the Spire. We would have gotten lethal. We got three strikes. Um... Oh, gosh. Let me think about that for a second. Um, what are misconceptions that people have? I think, so, uh, the word greatest is doing a, a little bit of work in the question. Um, and it's asking me to, like, to make some selections uh, that are kind of nuanced. So, like, does greatest mean, like, shared by the widest portion of the community? Or, like... Um, the thing that I think is the most interesting, or like uh, the one that impacts people's win rates the most. Like, there's a lot of options for for what greatest can mean. Um, uh, I think if we're if we're talking about like both the thing that impacts, sort of a balance between the thing that impacts people's win rates the most and the thing shared by the largest portion of the community, um, it's that. Uh, picking, like, archetypes um, is something you want to be doing. A lot of people think, like, I need to pick this Corruption so that I can find Dead Branch and then, like, be a Corruption Dead Branch deck. Whereas, in reality, Corruption is just good by itself. Um, uh, just to, like, play cards for free. Um... Uh, there's a lot of, um, people get very excited about, like, um, defect decks that are, like, dedicated claw decks, where it's, like, all claws and, like, holograms and all-for-ones and stuff. Um, but, like, in reality, you can have, like, a Frost Orb scaling defect that just uses, uses, like, a light amount of claw recursion to, like, scale damage. There's, like, a lot of, there's a lot of, like, nuance and gray area that gets, um, that gets stepped over if you have, um, uh, if you're over and indexed into like card archetypes um, and uh, builds. I think it's probably the, probably the greatest misconception. Uh, I think we're probably picking corruption. Corruption is just like a good card. <laughs> um, uh, one of the biggest downsides of corruption is that it like limits your strength scaling. So if you are reliant on like a spot weakness for your strength scaling, then corruption can uh, limit how much of that you get. We're not really concerned about that here because we don't we're, we have demon form for strength scaling. We don't care about spot weakness. Um, uh, there's really nothing we'd like to hold on to other than perhaps second wind. Um, so I think corruption is going to be. Real good. Okay. Looks like we're taking one more upgrade. Pretty good Act 1 in terms of upgrades. Um, Corruption's got a nice upgrade. Pummel's got a pretty good one. Might be looking for a Bash upgrade here. Um, so, over the long run, most of these cards go away, right? Uh, the only card that, that we've added to the deck that stays is Wild Strike. So we've got Wild Strike, all the defends go away. I've got Wild Strike, Bash, and four strikes. That's the deck. Um, we don't have any card draw, so we can't do Sundial Loops, despite the fact that we have a teensy tiny deck. Um... Right. So six card deck. Wild Strike is kind of dangerous in a six card deck. Because it can quickly be a ten card deck where four of the cards are wounds and then you draw four wounds in a row and die. Um, we can't go too wrong upgrading Corruption, right? Second one, same. 
They're both really good. Actually, let's do the second one. We might not be playing Corruption, like, immediately um, in this fight, because we're afraid of losing all of our defense. Um, we could just second wind away the Corruption if we're planning on never playing it in the fight. We also lose a defend. I guess we could play defend and second wind, but now we're like not splitting him on turn two, which seems like something we need to be doing. We only have um, 23 damage. No potions. We didn't save any. Um, so we need like specifically bash pummel next turn to split from... Um, let's see. So we're doing 23. He's blocking for... What does he block for? Nine? Um... Uh, bosses, guardian, blocks for nine. Um, so we do 23, he blocks for nine, so we're doing a net 14. Um, so he's at 26. Pretty impossible for us to do 26 next turn, actually. I think there's literally no way to do it. Even Bash Pummel's not going to do it. So we're going to have to survive next turn. Um, but nothing we can do this turn helps. I guess playing Corruption helps a little bit, because then we can play, like, Dark Embrace, Triple Defend. Or something. I think we need to not play Corruption first cycle, though. Yeah, exactly. I am concerned about <laughs> Corruption. Alright, we need to play Demon Form, but I don't want to get Vent Steamed. Um, looks like we have to choose one of those two. Uh, what does he do after Vent Steam? He goes back, to, he goes and does Whirlwind. Okay. Um, pretty rarely get Vent Steamed in this fight. Vent Steam also weakens us, so we'd have to do 17 damage while weakened with 3 strength to power us. Um... The Whirlwind doesn't literally kills, kill us, but it almost does. It does... Oh, it does actually kill us. It does 28. I guess we have a Defend coming, but... Yikes. Um, I think we need to risk it, though. We need to play Demon Form. Wild Strike does not split. Alright. Might get killed by Guardian here. Um, I think we'll just bash strike and save the pummel for when, for when we're older. Uh, I think I'm gonna go dark embrace second win. Actually, I'm gonna do dark embrace defend second win. I want to get rid of the wounds, but uh, I don't want to lose the defend. And I don't care about drawing the strikes. So that's fine. Alright, double defense survives the turn, right? Block for 12, he hits us for 4 health damage. Yeah, can't afford to attack. Um, bash strike knocks him back down. Seems good. Our scaling is too strong, Guardian. Uh, if we second wind, can we afford to double strike? Uh oh. There's no way to block next turn. We need lethal next turn or we lose. Alright, well if we need lethal next turn, we need to do, do the max damage this turn. Um... This takes 2 damage, but does 36. I think we've checkmated ourselves here. There's no way to survive next turn. Uh, unless Wild Strike Pummel is lethal. I think it is. Wait, actually, Pummel is lethal. Holy crap, we made it. That was a close one. Um... Jeez, uh... 
Thanks, Demon Form. <laughs> Yikes. I guess I'm glad I upgraded Second Wind instead of Corruption. If, we had, if we'd upgraded Corruption over Second Wind, we would have died. I did not think that was going to be that close. Um, brutality is card draw. We're definitely looking for uh, Sneko Eye. Sneko Eye is really good here. Right? Yeah. Well, there's two different types of thorns in the game. There's a couple of different... Um, different types of thorns. He doesn't work like a spiker, for example. I think there's three different types of thorns effect. There's whenever you attack thorns, which is what Guardian has. There's whenever you deal damage thorns, which is what spikers have. And there's whenever you lose health thorns, which is like static discharge. I guess if you want to count the beat of the heart, that's a fourth type of thorns. Uh, there's a Juggernaut. Are we going to go infinite? I think probably. We're trying to. We have a very thin deck. Dark Embrace, Second Wind, Corruption. Uh, there's only six cards that stay in the deck. Wild Strike, Bash, Four Strikes. So if we can get rid of some of those, we will be infinite. Yeah, yeah, I think the beat of the heart, thousand cuts after image, thorns is is a, uh, I mean, after image is clearly not thorns, right? Because it's it doesn't do damage, it um, it blocks, which is the opposite of what thorns do, like definitionally. But um, if it, it is kind of like negative thorns, it's kind of funny. Yeah, Pandora's box would be super nice. Get rid of these uh, these crappy basics. Uh, I was trying to think of if Juggernaut's good. I guess Juggernaut just gets in the way, huh? Because we're trying to go infinite, so we don't care about whenever we dot dot dot. How do we block when we go infinite? If we have Corruption, then like any block card is a. Uh, we might we might actually need to. Um, we might need Iron Wave to be part of the infinite. We might need, like, Iron Wave double Pommel Strike or something. Or no, that wouldn't quite work. I guess, like, Pommel Strike um, and, um, and like, a zero-cost attack that draws. So, like, Dropkick or um, the colorless one that I was using yesterday would be energy positive, and then we can use Iron Wave for block. Ugh. Hmm. Oh, that just dies to beat of the heart, doesn't it? I guess we just, like, generate a bunch of block, <laughs> and then, like, it's enough. With, like, second wins and stuff. Alright, I don't think any of these are helping us enough. I don't think Juggernaut is necessary. No Sneko Eye, no Pandora's Box. Those would be the, the sort of bonanza picks. Um, Astrolabe seems pretty good. Um, get rid of three of our strikes. Uh, hopefully it gives us, like, powers or skills or things that exhaust. Card draw. Lots of good options for Master Labe. There's some bad ones, too. There's, like, Anger and stuff. Uh, Runic Cube could be our card draw engine. And Suzu could be a fourth energy. Fourth energy is actually a pretty big deal. Um, because we have the um, demon form that we're going to have to play. Corruption as well. Yeah, Shrug Plus would be amazing. Uh, yeah, we do have, like, pretty good defensive relics, right? Orc Alchem, Oddly Smooth Stone. I guess Orc Alchem is not actually very good in the deck, but Oddly Smooth Stone is. Could really use some block cards. In fact, if we, if we manage to exhaust the defense with the second wind, we could do an infinite with Shrug. Shrug Pommel Strike would be infinite, for example. Palm Strike Plus. Um. I 
Runic Cube would be good with the, uh, what is it called? Brutality that we just skipped. Draw two extra cards per turn. I'm gonna take a quick break, be right back. Darn it, I always do that to myself. Thank you, Fuzzy Ducky. I think you caught me being muted yesterday as well. <laughs> Fuzzy Ducky, to the rescue. Yeah, I was responding to, to Guitar's comment that um, three energy and activity is super bad. Uh, Astrolabe could give us the tools for the infinite, could give us the card draw cards or more powers or things that exhaust skills. Um, you here for the patch? Is there a patch? Uh, I'm not still muted, am I? No. Like a Slay the Spire patch? I mean, there was one earlier in December, but there has not been one recently, not that I see. Um, although they don't really... They don't give the um, the details about beta patches, so they could slip one by me. Good morning, Pixel Nice. I think I'm going to go for the sort of high variance, high reward option. The Oh, the vegetable patch! <laughs> Yes, of course. Hashtag patch gang rise up. Uh, Alright, let's do the astrolabe. This is the most fun one. Um, we don't really need potions for anything specifically, but we don't have any potions right now, so it feels quite bad to pick Sozu. Deny ourselves a, a resource for the rest of the game. Uh, I see a dropkick. Uh, Silver Soul helps us exhaust stuff. Getting three attacks is not great. I was hoping for at least a skill that we could exhaust with corruption or a power or something. Um, the expected value for cards that exhaust is approximately uh, one there if you're transforming three cards. So I guess Silver Soul kind of counts. Uh, these are certainly better than strikes though, so happy about that. Dropkick in particular is extremely good. 
drop pick sundial gives us a lot of room to spend energy on the card draw. We just need one more card and it could cost up to two to draw two cards. Um, okay. Uh, I wouldn't hate going to a shop. Could remove the Sever Soul. Sever Soul actually does pretty good damage for energy. Ooh, yeah, an Abacus would be amazing. Abacus would absolutely save our bacon. Uh, yeah, the block is a concern. Block against the heart. Something we're going to have to have to figure out before we get there. Um, I kind of like this four elite path with two extra fires. It has a mega elite. I think that's too ambitious, now that I think about it. We do have a whirlwind now, so we're a little bit more prepared for Act 2 AoE stuff. But we do not have any energy, so... We should probably steer clear of four elite paths. Let's optimize for fires. I think we need fires and, like, a shop, maybe. Um, fires are a bit thin on the ground. The only way to get two extra ones is to do the Mega Elite. Um, that's not true. We could do this guy. So we'll, we'll go through here. That's an Elite in a shop. That shop's in about the right place. We'll have, like, 350 gold by the time we get there. That's perfect. Okay, great. And we got a bunch of question marks on the way there. Looks good. Um, corruption or Wild Strike Strike? We'll just play Corruption. Um, no defense, we'll save them. We've got a Dark Embrace, so they're pretty free later. Um, ouch. I guess second wind is our only way to block. So I'll second wind. And, um... Sever Soul does a bunch of damage. Um, second... Sever Soul is actually kind of an important resource in the deck now that I think about it. Because second wind gets exhausted by corruption. So we'll be able to play the wild strike after corruption. Because Sever Soul can get rid of the, uh, the wound. Kind of important. Alright, Dark Embrace, do your thing. Uh, oh, we had another energy? Oops. Um. Uh, that's a good idea. Demon Form and let Orc Alchemproc. It only would have cost us 2 HP. We got Demon Form down. Probably the right way to play it. Um, Sever Soul draws a card here. And then we probably have lethal. Yeah. Okay. Not the cleanest line. There's a pommel strike. That makes us infinite, right? We should take that. Uh, Dark Embrace is insane in the fight, although Demon Form on turn one, also quite nice. I'm a bit torn. Uh, if we Dark Embrace, we also get to pommel strike and drop kick. Um... Let's play the demon form. Let's get that going. Yeah, exactly. We don't really have to like do anything crazy. We just have to like win the fight, right? So it doesn't we don't get bonus points for going infinite. Uh do we have lethal? Probably with liquid memories. Like bash pummel. Pommel strike. Uh, Bash doing 10. Pummel would do, let's see, 9 times 4. 9 times 4 is 
36, so it's 46, so we're off by 20. I don't think Pommel's gonna, Pommel Strike's gonna do 20. So let's just do, um, let's do Bash Wild Strike then. Actually, is Bash Wild Strike more damage? I think it is. 17 goes up to, uh, goes up by 8, so it goes to 25. So yeah, bash double, double wild strike is also not lethal. Hmm. Because it says 50 and this says 10, so it's 60 damage. So maybe just bash defend then. Try and save some health. I think that makes sense. Oh, you're right. Defend is worse than orc album. Good point. Uh, all right, we'll let we'll let pummel uh, shuffle then. Um, people are asking a lot of very reasonable questions. I think maybe I'm just, like, playing this deck horribly. <laughs> is the answer to all the questions. I'm just bad. <laughs> uh, we have an infinite, so we should probably not add too many more cards to the deck. Heavy Blade Plus and Flex Plus are both say plus on them. Heavy Blade Plus in particular combos with our Demon Form. Uh, how many cards do we have after Exhausts? Yeah, I think... It, it's, we're sort of on the border between, like, it's easier to count the cards that go away and it's easier to count the cards that stay. I'm going to count the cards that stay. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards that stay. Um, <laughs> it's time to ban people who ask questions. That's right. <laughs> that's, the, that's the adult reaction here. Lash out in anger. Um... So we definitely have some room. We can do the combo with as many as 11 cards in deck. Um, uh, Envo has asked for Coconut to be summoned. Well, who am I to stand between Twitch chat and cat? Hi, Envo. Coconut also says hi. Say hi, Coconut. Meow. Um, let's see. What are we considering right now? Oh, we're considering like a, a Heavy Blade Plus. So we could theoretically add a Heavy Blade Plus to the deck, but I think those extra four slots is probably just going to be like... Like Demon Form or like... Um, uh, some other power we didn't want to play. Pummel or something. Also, the smaller the deck is, the easier the combo is to pull off, right? So if we want, like, a reliable turn one combo, which is obviously what we want, um, then we should steer clear of, uh, of adding extra cards. I think this Heavy Blade is just, just kind of a bonus at this point, so no. Um... Thunderclap, theoretically, could help, too. It's a cheaper way of applying Vulnerable. We do have to apply Vulnerable for the combo, because Dropkick and Bash is kind of expensive. Um, I think I'd rather find a Shockwave later, though. Shockwave exhausts itself and is free with Corruption. Oh, surprise shop. Um, we're super looking for uh, Abacus. Abacus is, like, our best friend here. Um, we could also do, let's see, does, um, um, what's it called? Uh, gosh, Ornamental Fan. Ornamental Fan, like, almost combos. It's like, we only lose, like, two health. Um, uh, I guess we could buy Double Tap, but why? What does Double Tap do for us? Could I shrug it off? Uh, I was kind of assuming we were going to buy Preserved Insect, because it's so good. Um, Matryoshka cannot get us Abacus, right? Abacus is a shop relic. Let me just look this up really quick. Um, uh, Abacus is a shop relic. 
Okay. Um, yeah, double tap. I mean, double tap works, but we already have a combo. We have a pommel strike drop kick. That's already good enough. Um, although I guess double tap pommel strike works on people who don't people who aren't vulnerable, which would be nice. Um, but it's difficult to keep double tap around because we have corruption to to thin the defense out. So I would imagine that's probably not happening. Card remove is nice. Card remove makes the deck a little bit smaller. So we can do like insect card remove. Uh, we were planning on going to a shop. What is our alternate route now? Maybe we just skip here because we really need to have enough money to buy um, Abacus if we see it. Um, th neither of these can be shops. I know this one can't be a shop. I don't think this one can be a shop either. I think there might be a 2% chance that that one's a, sh a shop. Um, I don't... I think we're trying to... I think we're pretty afraid of Act 2 Elites. Um, I think we just get, like, randomly beaten up by a bunch of them. Um, so I think we're probably trying to dodge, dodge that. Um, so if we buy Card Remove and Regen Pot, do we have enough money to buy... Abacus at the shop. So the maximum the Abacus can cost. That's true. Insect is really good. Insect is also like super nice at like assassinating a slaver on turn one. How much health do the slavers have? Um, uh, Red slaver has between 48 and 52 health. So if he has 25% less, let's assume he has 52 as his starting health. Uh, 52 times 0.75 is 39 health. 39 still seems like a pretty high, high ask for the deck on turn one. It's like Wild Strike Sever Soul does it and nothing else. I guess like Wild Strike Dropkick Pommel Strike does it. That's like all the damage. War 1 for 3 does not do it. Um, if we buy a regen pot and card remove, we spend 159. Um, so we'd be left with 125. If we get 125 uh, and neither of these are fights, then we get gold from this elite. Um, we get minimum 25 gold from that. Um, so 129 plus 25 is 154, so we wouldn't have enough money necessarily to buy Abacus here. Um, so I think we're just skipping. We're looking for a specific shop relic, so we're, I think we're going to go to both of these shops. Um, and we need to say keep above 180 gold. So I think we just buy Regen Pop and skip a card remove. We can always just get the card remove later, right? Preserved Insect is definitely nice, but it's just too expensive. Do we lose the run? If we just go to a bunch of shops here. Because it seems like we don't get very strong. And we might not even be able to go to this shop. We might be too low after this elite and be forced to go to the fire. I think it should be okay if we buy a region pot. We should be able to fight two elites. Maybe. Alright. Oh. Well. <laughs> that's too bad. I wish this was a blood pot. I could just drink the blood pot right now. Take two liquid memories. This is a waste of money. I'd be happy with two liquid memories, but I think I'm happier with a regen pot. Darn. We're just totally wasting this event. And the next one's a snake plant. Alright, let's drink the regen pot and get the strength going. Seems like a pretty good turn one. 
second wind blocks for the same amount as Orc Alchem here, so not much advantage to doing that. I guess palm with Pommel Strike it could block for more. Alright, let's see it. Nope. Um, we could Liquid Memories a Defend, and then second one would hit for two. Seems like an awful use of a Liquid Memories. All right. Uh, it's actually more damage to do Sever Soul. Wild Strike Strike, the strike only does two because of the Malleable, so this does three more damage. We'd lose the second wind and the defend, but I'm not sure if we need those. We have a um, we have a demon form ticking, so I think they're not good. <laughs> and Edsbon says, why not four elites? Because we would die. <laughs> We're having trouble enough with just a snake plant. Um, Whirlwind hits for 30. Um... The last card in the deck is Bash, so it's the only card that we can't Liquid Memories. Thanks, Miranda. Uh, if we Liquid Memories a Pommel Strike, then we can draw Bash, and then we can play Bash, and then play Dropkick. And Dropkick would draw a card. Um, problem with that plan is it doesn't doesn't actually do that much more than just whirlwinding for 30. Uh, Bash is not that energy efficient compared to whirlwind plus with six strength. So I think we're just gonna whirlwind. Believe in the you that believes in yourself. I cannot name the anime. All right, I guess we're out of the fight. Gross. Sundial set up. Sentinel's good. Sentinel's, in fact, incredible. We can play, like, Corruption Sentinel Demon Form. It says plus on it. Blocks. Exhausts. I'm into it. It's up against Iron Wave and Pommel Strike. Is Iron Wave actually part of a combo? It actually is, isn't it? Yeah, we actually kind of have to pick a, an Iron Wave. Iron Wave is a solution to the problem that we have. If Pommel Strike gets upgraded, it draws three cards. Oh wait, no. No, it doesn't quite work. Um, okay, so if we play Dropkick Pommel Strike, uh, that's a plus one energy loop uh, because Dropkick costs net zero. So we can do, we can do a two loop loop, basically. Um, so you do drop, drop quick pommel strike for the first half, and then iron wave pommel strike, iron wave pommel strike. Oh wait, no, the pommel strike doesn't draw itself. Hmm. So it have to be iron wave pommel strike drop kick. Iron wave pommel strike drop kick. And iron wave pommel strike drop kick just doesn't block against the heart. So blocks for negative one. So I think we'll go with the Sentinel instead. Iron Wave is not, is not a solution. I guess Iron Wave plus blocks. Um, but uh, not by enough, right? So, okay, so we Pommel Strike Dropkick to generate one energy. And then we do two loops of uh, Iron Wave Pommel Strike Dropkick which each generate one net block. So we end up losing two health by playing eight cards against the heart. It's a pretty good rate. Uh, it's not block positive, which is what you want out of your infinite. Um, but it's not hugely negative. Actually, no, it is block positive because of oddly smooth stone. Um, so I get, it's actually block neutral. Are you insane? Um, so we play eight cards and two iron waves for the loop. The iron waves are upgraded, so they block for eight. Um, yeah, and that blocks for 16. So it's, it's exactly block neutral with an iron wave plus. That's strange. Um, 
Am I counting the energy rate? Um, uh, I'm not. I was assuming for some reason that doing two loops with Iron Wave in there cost a net one energy. Um, but it's every... If we do three loops, it costs two energy, is how it actually works. So we're doing three three-card loops, so that's nine cards, and then two two-card loops, so that's four cards. So it's a total of 13-card cycle that in which three of them are iron waves. Um, so 13 cards costs us 26 health, and the three iron waves gives us 24 block. So it is not block positive, it's block negative. It's also very complicated. <laughs> Which is which is a downside in and of itself. It also adds a card to the deck, which is kind of clunky. Um, it's possible that we get like a kunai or something, in which case it's block positive. Um, ornamental fan also obviously makes it block positive. Um, Sentinel is just like good though. Iron Wave is not good. Is there any way, other way of getting dex as an ironclad? It seems like the answer is no. It's like kunai or nothing, because we already have oddly smooth stone. Um, yeah, that's literally the only way, right? Uh, potion, that's true. Good point. Two potions, speed pot and Dex pot, both do it. Um, there's no other attacks that block. Um, you know what we could do? We could have a, a cycle where we have Wild Strike and Sever Soul in the loop. Um, and then... Um, and then have a bunch of field no pains. That would work. Uh, how many field no pains would that take? Okay, so all right. So sever soul and wild strike cost three. Wild strike costs two card draws whenever we play it because we have to redraw the wild strike and draw the wound. Sever soul just cost one card draw. So the pommel strike drop kick loop is plus one card draw. Or actually it's not. We need it to be plus zero card draw or else it doesn't generate energy. That's true. Rage would work. Rage would work too. Good point. Rage and Iron Wave. Actually just Rage by itself works. Yeah, Rage is way better than, than Iron Wave. Because with Rage we can just uh, Pommel Strike drop kick. That's way easier. All right, thank you for saying that, Crimson. That's a that's a really insightful comment. Um, actually, rage means we can't play corruption, right? Or we need like a barricade because um, we only get to go infinite once. All right, well, we'll worry about that later. Let's pick the Sentinel. I think we're resting here. 27 is not quite enough to guarantee survival against, like, Book of Stabbing or Slavers. It's probably good enough for Gremlin later. Let's find out. Uh, Whirlwind is godly here. We do have to skip Dark Embrace or else it doesn't kill the Wizard. Um, we could just Dark Embrace and then Whirlwind. Still kills the sneaky Gremlin. Um, we don't have much AoE, though. So, um, being able to kill the wizard later is not super easy. Although we have an infinite, so we should probably move things towards being infinite. Okay. I guess it also draws a card with the, uh, whatchamacallit? The thingy. Um... Bash Pommel Strike kills Wizard and draws a card. If it draws Demon Form or Corruption, then we're sad. 
because we want to play those. Um, we could Pummel to get rid of it. That also draws a card, because of the Dark Embrace. So there's no way around drawing a card. Um, I would rather bash on the leader, because it could set up an infinite. I guess that only matters if we're infiniting this turn or next turn, which both seem unlikely. So let's just bash this guy. Okay. Um, seems like if we're playing one of these two, we should play Demon Form first, right? And it seems like we're playing one of the two. Okay, Demon Form first. All right, no targets for Dropkick. We're playing all the cards because we have five energy. And I guess we're hoping it's enough to survive. Uh, 20, 31, 40. It's not enough to kill Mad Gremlin. That's kind of a disaster. We could Liquid Memories to save 10 health by killing Mad Gremlin. That seems wise. Do we survive 16 times three? We do. Okay. Hmm. If we bash, we're maybe setting up for lethal next turn. So it's like, uh, we'd like bash whirlwind. Second wind draws like a million cards next turn. Yeah, let's set it up. See if we can get it. We also just like have a bunch of strength now. Uh, we did not draw the second wind. I guess corruption defend is guaranteed to draw a second wind. Yeah, I needed a miracle this turn, and I didn't get it. Well, I trust that we've satisfactorily answered the question, why not four elites? Um, yep, this is sad. We got a early sundial, went, went in for an infinite, died to an act two elite. That's kind of the story if you try to go for an infinite um, a lot of the time. Uh, we did have an infinite. Uh, exhaust the whole deck, play a dropkick pommel strike forever, was the plan. Uh, are you asking why I didn't do no elites? Um, first off, there's no line that, that dodges all elites, and second off, we were hunting for abacus at a shop because we didn't realize rage was the solution. I guess we were hunting for either abacus or rage. Uh, we wanted something to uh, make the infinite generate block. Um, oh, I see. <laughs> um, um, why do people keep talking about four elites? We were not, this was our first elite and we weren't doing four. <laughs> we could have, we would have gone here and we would have died. Like we wouldn't have even gone to the fire first. Uh, no, it's it's gonna be silent next. I do the, I just rotate through. Um, hmm. Wonder how we were supposed to do that better. We needed more card draw. We needed like a shrug it off or something. Honestly, we just needed stuff to line up a little better. Eventually, we would have gotten more like more relics. Um. That like would have gotten us card draw. Maybe like a. Uh, bag of prep or something. Bag of prep would have been really nice. But honestly, just like, the demon form was so super clunky. We took a demon form from Niao, but spending three energy on playing it as a three energy deck was very difficult. We did get a bad outcome from Astrolabe. Astrolabe turned out to be way worse than Sozu. Uh, we didn't even get any potions. 
No, we must have gotten potions. Uh, oh, right, we drank all the potions in the snake plant fight. Um, yeah, Sozu, Sozu would have been a little faster. Uh, maybe we should have bought more stuff at the shop. If we bought more stuff at the shop, maybe we would have survived better. I'm not sure what we were supposed to buy, though. Um, uh, preserved insect would not have helped. We wouldn't have had lethal in time. And the health of the original gremlins wasn't wasn't close. We had lethal for it, so. Hmm. Yeah, not sure why this one didn't get off the ground. It was close, just not quite.